Do you believe in the hollow earth theory? Do you even know what it is? Don't worry folks, today we're here to cover every snippet of info and news around it, so stay tuned. For starters, what is it? So several years ago, a group of believers informed a member of the Geophysical Institute staff that there was an opening to the center of the Earth in the Alaska Range, and that this was an entry and exit point for flying saucers. Modern day proponents of the hollow Earth theory can refer non-believers to the book The Hollow Earth by Raymond Bernard. Now Bernard, judging from the initials he lists behind his name, holds just about every advanced academic degree, but is apparently somewhat of a recluse keeps to himself. As a spokesman for the publisher states in a foreword to the book, I will not enter into any correspondence regarding this book or the author. Whether you accept or reject the content of this book is your privilege. No one cares. The crux of the hollow earth theory is that the earth is a shell with walls about 800 miles thick. In the polar regions there are holes 1400 miles across with edges that curve smoothly from outside of the shell around to the inside. A sea or surface traveler could proceed over the edge of a hole, like an ant crawling over the lip of a coffee mug from the outside to the inside and not be aware that he was actually entering the interior of the earth. Bernard explains that the holes have never been seen from the air because pilots are fooled by their compasses into believing that they are crossing the pole when they are actually following the holes of magnetic rim. Thus, aircraft never really fly over the geographic poles, which naturally mark the centers of the holes themselves. As you know, proof that you cannot deny of this claim, this man cites Admiral Byrd's statement saying, I'd like to see that land beyond the pole. That area beyond the pole is the great unknown. So the hollow earth theory actually seems to have originated in the early 1800s by John Sims, an earnest American who devoted the greater part of his later life to convincing the world that the earth was formed by a series of shells. Now he believed that there were miles of wondrous unclaimed domain beneath our feet, with lush vegetation and fish and game for the taking. So apparently there was a lot of folks that took him seriously. As reported in the October 1882 issue of Harper's New Monthly Magazine, a Mr. Halgate had recently been in the news, proposing that an expedition be made to discover Sims Hole. Now, his plan was to have a number of men acclimate themselves to higher and higher latitudes, moving further north each year. Now, they were to observe the animals that presumably wintered over within the earth each year and emerged during the spring to bear young. Now, eventually, the colony of men were to follow the animals in the fall to find where they entered into that marvelous land at the center of the earth. In early summer of 2007, a Utah River guide named Steve Curry planned to head an expedition, the likes of which we don't often see nowadays. This champion of the centuries old old hollow earth theory chartered a Russian nuclear powered icebreaker on the premise that we don't know. Between June 26 and July 19th, Steve intended to sail the North Pole from Murmansk to the precise coordinates at which he expected to find the entrance to, you guessed it, interior earth. For his $20,000 apiece, 100 passengers were invited to join this historic voyage. However, a year before this scheduled departure, Curry died suddenly of brain cancer, and the trip was canceled. In the years since, an engineer named Brooks Agnew has taken up the mantle, pun intended, of offbeat Arctic exploration. The North Pole Inner Earth Expedition is still afoot, although logistical details are kind of scarce. In a 2022 interview, the new leader framed his quest as a dispassionate, empirical endeavor. What's the truth? It's difficult to tell, he said. That's one of the reasons we want to do this expedition. Perhaps the most eminent hypothesis claimed by today's believers comes from the English astronomer Edmund Halley. Now, in 1686, trying to explain shifts in the planet's magnetic field over time, he suggested that below the surface, there were these concentric shells. Hmm, where have we said this before? Each with poles that rotate independently and interfere with above ground compass readings. He thought each of these nested layers was likely inhabited, their life form supported by some unknown light source. Now, his genius imbued the theory with some degree of credibility. And since then, as David Standish explains in Hollow Earth, it has enjoyed a long and vibrant history, with later generations enlarging its scope. Right down to the present, he writes, the idea has been used again and again, changing and evolving in ways that suit the needs and concerns of each succeeding time. Now, it was one thing for this guy to speculate on the bowels of the earth, and quite another for John Sims, you know his name, to seek them out. So in 1818, Sims published Circular No. 1, both an account of his views on the subject and a vow of action, saying, I pledge my life in support of this truth, and I'm ready to explore the hollow, if the world will support and aid me in the undertaking, that is. Now, such an undertaking seemed reasonable in light of his new contribution to the hollow earth theory. Now, Yes, well, Halley never posted a bridge to the nether regions. Sims insisted on the existence of openings at the North and South Poles, granting access to 
Once again, this warm and rich land, stocked with thrifty vegetables and animals, if not men. In his telling, these holes spanned thousands of miles and curved so gently that you could sail into them without noticing the transition. His evangelism was mostly met with ridicule, and his dreams of a government-funded expedition kind of didn't happen. And yes, as I mentioned before, he never made his track. But his ideas blossomed throughout the 19th century. So where do you find the entrance to this place? Well, Hollow Earth proponents have claimed a number of different locations for the entrances, which lead inside the Earth. And other than the North and South Poles, entrances and locations which have been cited include Paris, France, Staffordshire in England, Montreal in Canada, there's been a spot in China, and the Amazon rainforest. One recent Instagram post claimed that there is an enormous void with a stunning magnetic anomaly or a massive gravity anomaly beneath Antarctica's ice. A different world or a mythic land exists in that space, where giant animals roam in green forests surrounded by extraterrestrial technologies. Now elsewhere, believers propose that aliens, Vikings, ancient civilizations, and Yahtzees escaping to allied forces all live in this place. It has even been reported, although apparently without historical documentation, that the formal evil German dictator was influenced by concave hollow earth ideas and sent an expedition in an unsuccessful attempt to spy on the British fleet by pointing infrared cameras up at the sky. Folks also claim that Adam and Eve from the Bible were banished from inside of the earth to the outside, and the lost tribes of Israel migrated from the outside to the inside. Now, going back to that Instagram post I mentioned a moment ago that echoed Sim's beliefs, well, the Earth's interior could be reached through polar holes, and the elites are trying to hide those entrances. How? By manipulating polar satellite images and banning travel to Antarctica. Now, this Instagram post also indicates that satellite images always come with the poles removed, blurred, or covered. And one picture included in the post, produced by NASA's ISAT satellite, shows all of Antarctica except the South Pole. And this post also claims that this is part of the plot to keep underworld entrances hidden. Cyrus Teed, a doctor from upstate New York, proposed a concave hollow earth in 1869, calling his scheme cellular cosmogony. Now, Teed founded a group called the Khorashan Unity, based on this notion, which he called Khorashanity. Now, the main colony survives as a preserved Florida state historic site, but all of Teed's followers have now died. It's been a minute. Now, his followers claim to have experimentally verified the concavity of Earth's curvature. Those surveys through surveys of the Florida coastline making use of special equipment. So how long has this like theory existed? Well, in ancient times, the concept of a subterranean land inside the earth appeared in mythology, folklore, and legends. The idea of subterranean realms seemed arguable. And well, it kind of made sense when you look at the concept of places of origin or afterlife, such as the Greek underworld, the Christian hell, and many more. The idea of a subterranean realm is also mentioned in Buddhist belief. According to one story from traditions, there is an ancient city called Shambhala, which is located inside the earth. According to the ancient Greeks, there were caverns under the surface, which were entrances leading to the underworld. In Mesopotamian religion, there is a story of a man who, after traveling through the darkness of a tunnel in the mountain of Mashu, entered a subterranean garden. In Celtic mythology, there is a legend of a cave which is known as Ireland's Gate to Hell, a mythical and ancient cave from which strange creatures would emerge and be seen on the surface of the earth. There are also stories of medieval knights and saints who went on pilgrimages to a cave where they made, you know, journeys inside the earth to a place of purgatory. In Hindu mythology, the underworld is referred to as Patala. In the Bengali version of the Hindu epic Ramayana, it has been depicted how Rama and Lakshmana were taken by the king of the underworld, who was the brother of the demon king, and later on they were rescued. And there's, there's so many other stories from history as well that appear in many other cultures that all have to do with some sort of underworld underneath our earth. And finally for today, earlier this year in Hamilton, Ohio, there was actually a hollow earth festival that was celebrated by many. And it was like an inaugural one, like the first ever. And it made its way to Sims Park. Yeah, you heard me right. The festival was a way for folks to start revitalizing the park. It was one of Hamilton's original parks, and this was according to Scott Smallwood, one of the festival's committee members. Now, he said that they wanted to honor people who were visionaries in the area. After this year, their plan was to find a visionary that lived there, had a contribution to society, and honor that person. So the first festival was held from noon to 4 p.m. on April 13th at the park, and it celebrated the history of Hamilton and featured historical discussions, STEM demonstrations, experiments, food trucks, a specialty brew, like all sorts of fun stuff. The purpose was that like folks wanted to create a festival to celebrate the past history and also celebrate people who were visionaries. And they also just wanted to help the area grow and become better. So who were these visionaries? Well, 
none other than local hero Captain John Sims, whose idea of the Hollow Earth inspired everything that I've talked about today. He was a veteran of the War of 1812, by the way, and he was actually buried in the park. There was a marker placed there to celebrate his visionary ideas. The monument at the park initially marked his gravesite, and the cemetery was just later turned into the park. Makes sense. And folks were like, this is year one. They want to keep doing the festival. They want to raise more money. They want to make the park a safe haven for folks to hang out with. And that's it for me once again, folks. I've been Alexa, your resident ooky spooky girly. See y'all next time, you lovely spooky people.